Hello, Chen King students. Welcome back. We are going to be going through the next section, 17.6, solubility product constant. So to begin talking about the solubility equilibrium situation, let's go back to Chen Chem 1 and think about what happens when we add these two solutions together. So I've got lead nitrate aqueous and sodium iodide aqueous, and we learned these solubility rules to help us predict whether or not two ions come together would produce a solid product or would it be aqueous. So remember how we did that was we break these apart. So this is lead 2 plus plus NO3 minus plus Na plus plus I. Oh, and actually, no, that's right, I minus. And we start to make our new compounds. So I'm going to add these together. Oops, sorry about that. Positive and negative, these together and these together, this double displacement type reaction. So the potential products are lead iodide plus sodium nitrite, nitrate rather. And then we use solubility rules to predict whether these should be aqueous or solid. So halides usually aqueous, but with uh, one of these, this would we predict to be solid and this we'd predict to be aqueous. And we thought of these as just one arrow going in this direction. Let's actually just break this down into the net ionic equation for a second. So just look at Pb2 plus plus I minus. In reality, this is also an equilibrium. So it's not correct to just draw one arrow. This is an equilibrium with I2. PBI2. So that's what the solubility product is all about. Uh, we can actually describe the equilibrium situation of this reaction. And by convention, we write these with looking at the reverse. So the solid compound in equilibrium with aqueous. And notice this is a heterogeneous equilibrium. We have solid interacting with aqueous phase. Also, I'll point out that when we're considering this, we are really looking at saturated, saturated solutions. When a solution is completely saturated, as in 100% is dissolved as possible, that's the point at which this process is in equilibrium. So we've already reached equilibrium, and we're studying the ratios of solid to aqueous products here. Now. If we're actually going to write out the equilibrium constant here, we're going to call this Ksp. So remember the equilibrium constant here, and it looks like I'm missing a 2. Don't forget that. It's the products to their coefficients, molar coefficients to the power of their coefficients divided by the reactants. So it's the concentration of Pb2 plus in solution times the concentration of I minus in solution squared. Now we do not include anything on the bottom. This is a aqueous equilibrium, or sorry, heterogeneous equilibrium. So the solid is not included. So this is the KSP. And that's why we call it the solubility product. It's just the product of the dissolved species in at equilibrium. So since this is a solid, we pretty much think of that as not changing its concentration. So we leave it out of our equilibrium expression. So simply put, that is the KSP value. And at, I believe, 25 degrees Celsius, this value equals 8.9 times 10 to the negative 29th. What does that tell us? Well, that means when I put lead iodide into solution, what uh, is the, what's favored, this side or this side? Well, the concentration of this times the concentration of these dissolved ions only equals this tiny, 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 tiny number, as in barely anything is dissolved in solution. That's why we say when lead and iodide come together, if heavily favors the precipitate. These compounds are not going to be broke up in solution. So this really small value really shows why we consider 
this almost like a, a forward arrow and not an equilibrium. But technically it's still an equilibrium. So we get a really small value for products that are very insoluble in water. So that is the first part of our discussion here. Uh, really just trying to define what is the solubility product constant. It's just like any other equilibrium expression. Just remembering that we do not include this in our equilibrium expression itself. Again, we're considering, I just want to make this point clear, considering saturated solutions. Because if we're not saturated, that means the equilibrium still has to shift toward dissolving products. So if this is not saturated, then I still have to add more of this to make the solution saturated. Clearly, it does not take much of this to go into solution to make it saturated. However, if we think of sodium chloride, this is kind of going back to chapter 13. We said this is a very soluble product, and we see that every day. We can add a lot of salt into water. So if you got any Cl and you're adding that into a solution of H2O, you have to add, keep adding, keep adding. And at a certain point, let's say there's a tiny bit of salt left on the bottom with lots and lots of this dissolved, saturated. So now we're at equilibrium. And we can define this as, again, we can write out our equilibrium expression for what's happening. NaCl solid is in equilibrium with sodium plus dissolved now, and Cl minus dissolved. And you can imagine the KSP value for this is going to be quite large. There is a lot of sodium, a lot of chlorine dissolved in a saturated solution of sodium chloride. So very, very large value. I'm not even sure what that value would be, but it's going to be large. Actually, I wonder believe that's one that's so big, it's kind of like a strong acid. It's completely dissociating in solution. So the KSP value isn't really useful. The KSP values really are only useful for compounds that are somewhat soluble or not soluble in water. So saturated solutions. So let's look at the KSP value of something else here. Well, let's just talk about the KSP value for a second. We're gonna scroll down to a new page. So remember, what is KSP? It's the concentration or let's say, let me let me restart that. It's simply the product of ion concentrations. Uh, to the coefficients. It doesn't actually tell us, I'm just going to write this out to be clear, it doesn't tell us how much of that substance dissolves in water. How much? No. How much can dissolve in water? That's a different compound. It's solubility value. This is the number that you can pretty much find on Wikipedia for compounds. If you Google a compound in and just say in looking for the solubility of substance, this is typically a mass or moles divided by volume. So you'll typically see a grams per liter value. That's very common. So how many max grams dissolved per liter of solution. This is subtly different than the KSP value. KSP is just the constant. It's the product of the ion concentrations at equilibrium, but its solubility value actually has, you know, this mass value involved in it. So we're going to use KSP, a KSP value lookup in a table, 
to solve for the solubility value of a compound. So we're going to go through the calcium hydroxide example. Let's come down here and do that. Okay, let's consider calcium hydroxide. And if this is a solid, and remember, we're going to consider a saturated solution because we know this is at equilibrium. So we've reached equilibrium. And I put this in the water, and it's going to produce a certain amount of this and two moles of a hydroxide. So we would like to find out the solubility of this compound. And one more thing we know, KSP equals 5.0 times 10 to the negative 6. Seems small, but remember compared to lead iodide, negative 29th, that is a completely insoluble compound essentially. This though, there's actually a significant amount of this can dissolve in a liter of solution. So to do this, how do we actually find this? Well, we need to find, it's kind of like solving for X again, an equilibrium expression. We need to find how much of this and how much of this per liter of solution can actually dissolve. So we're gonna do another ice table style problem. So we're going to consider initially, what do we actually have in this problem? Well, because we're at saturated solution, we're going to say this is an excess. We have basically an excess of this, a maximum amount is dissolved. So I'm just gonna jot that in. And initially, before we reach equilibrium, we have zero of these. So we have excess of the first one, but it will still change by an X, but we don't really care because we have excess of it. It's gonna be a maximum amount dissolved but we will get a little bit of this back and this back. So those are our equilibrium constants, or equilibrium values, x and 2x. So if we're trying to solve for x, we need to use their KSP value. So remember, what does KSP equal? It's just the products of our ions multiplied by each other to their coefficients. Remember the coefficients? This is easy to forget. Remember that's squared from this 2 up here. And now let's replace all of this with x times 2x squared. And I'm going to put my KSP value over here. Okay. Let's go ahead and collect our terms. This goes to x times... 2 squared times x squared, so that's going to be 4x squared, 4x cubed. Okay, so keeping going here, let's move this over here. Actually, we'll leave that here. I'm going to divide by 4 and take the cube root. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that over here. So it's the cube root of our KSP value divided by four equals X. And if we solve for X, it's gonna be a pretty small value. 0 0.01077 molar. See, now we actually have molarity values here. So that's how much molar, that's gonna be our concentration of Ca2 plus. And hydroxide is going to have the same value because this is a one-to-one -one ratio in our equation here, one-to-one. -one. If we know this x value, that's how much is going to be the molarity is going to be added, we know that's how much molarity is going to be subtracted over here. So for our calcium hydroxide value, that is the actual molar solubility. Our 
x value actually equals how many moles per liter of our calcium hydroxide can actually dissolve in a saturated solution. How do we get to, let's say, a grams per liter value? It's pretty simple because if we think we have 0 0.01077 moles of CaOH2, that's our molar solubility. Now I can just convert this to grams using the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. So that would be 74.093 grams of CaOH2 molar mass per mole. I should probably put parentheses around those, huh? And 0 0.7 nine eight grams per liter that means the maximum amount of calcium hydroxide that i can dissolve in one liter of h2o is going to be a little less than a gram that's it not super soluble right that's not much it is soluble by definition but you know, not a whole lot. You can't dissolve a whole lot of calcium hydroxide in water at 25 degrees Celsius. That's the max. After you add this much to water, you add any excess, that calcium hydroxide will just settle out onto the bottom. That's really what, that's your past the equilibrium at that point. You've got excess. So that is how we use the actual KSP value in an ice table to solve for the molar solubility of this compound. Remember, we used just this X value for the calcium hydrox the calcium ion, X, and equated it to this because it was a one-to-one -one molar quantity. That value is our molar solubility for calcium hydroxide. And that is where I'm going to end this lecture. I'm just going to scan through the book. There's more examples you should be going through. And we will get to the next lecture soon. Please let me know if you guys have any questions, and thanks for watching.